Good morning, good morning. This is Marquise Martin Hayes, and it is time for Thriving Thursdays because if you're not thriving, you're dying. Your existence just isn't enough. And so we do everything in our power to empower you so that you can thrive in life, so that your contribution to others makes you feel good about who you are and changes your community. But as always, I love to share with you something from Rodan and Fields, what I use to keep my skin nice, clear, and clean. And so without further ado, I'd like to share a brief commercial with you. That's it. Nice, fresh, ready to go. That is literally me when I didn't have hair right before COVID. When I was cleaning my face, but that's my daily regimen, I use Rodan and Fields to keep my skin nice and clean. In particular, I use Redefine. It has a wash, it has a toner, and I have an AM moisturizer to help me keep my skin moisturized and protected, as well as an SPF. And then in PM, I have a repair that I use. Without further ado, all that stuff's done. Let's get on with the show because it's time for you to thrive. My guest today is a man I met many moons ago. We were both young, running around and trying to do the best that we could. Since that time, he has learned how to thrive in spite of the times. I can't wait to figure out what he's done, how he's done it. But the world knows him as Mr. Shane Graham. Good morning, brother. How you feel, man? What's up, my brother? Man, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Fantastic. It's good to see your face. You as well, man. You as well. All right. So what I like to try to do, right, because we'll catch up throughout, throughout this process. But one of the things that I like to do is up front, you probably saw it on one of the videos, tell people about you. And, and I need you not to be, as we call it, humble, because I need them to sit still and pay attention to what you're going to say. Tell the people about why other people acknowledge you. Oh, sure. Yeah, man. Well, first of all, I'm a husband, you know, I'm a mother of three girls and uh, uh, I'm a Christian, you know, so my faith in Christ is, is everything. Um, And then I am extremely passionate about art. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell people God is, God created me to be a creator. And if I wasn't creating art all over the world, I would, I'd die. I get that. I get that. And in, in your career, what are some of the highlights for you and that others would go, you did that? So that people can understand even more about some of that world of art that you do. Yeah, my, I have a lot of different, um, different art in my background. Um, a lot of my experience is in the theme industry, design and fabrication of large scale sculptures that you see in attractions, yes. major attractions. Yes. So I've done rock work and built huge trees and uh, sculptures for different theme parks. I work for Walt Disney Imagineering. Um, I'm assigned Disney artist now, so you can see my paintings in the Disneyland uh, theme parks. I'm in California Adventure, Disneyland, uh, and Disney World. Yeah. And then, uh, but my love since I was in high school is graffiti, street art. Yes. And, uh, you know, so I'm 47 now and i there's so much i could talk about but i've kind of done a turnaround where i've gone back to uh my love passion which is freedom of expression in street art Mm, it's good it's good so i'm 47 too man stop telling our age leave us alone no i love it i'm glad to hear that (laughs) i know right don't don't tell the world but so so shane so for a moment indulge me I forgot about that one. I don't know if it was a city church or what, the large rock. It was amazing. It was like one of the first times I met you. What are some of the things that people might be familiar with, some of the work that you have done that's received accolades or acknowledgments? Yeah. Well, so the biggest thing, I, I, I received international exposure in 2000. Didn't hear you. You might have I, international exposure in what year? Uh, 2019. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I grew up in a Northern California town called Chico. Chico, California is known for its college. Yeah. Yeah. So small, small town, farming community, school, 
Um, and then I live in LA now, but uh, there was a fire called the Paradise Campfire. Paradise is about 18 miles from uh, Chico, California. Okay. And so uh, when I grew up uh, all through my junior high and high school years, I had about two dozen friends that lost their homes in the Paradise Campfire. Wow. And so I love painting in areas that are, I, I feel like God has called me to be an artist that brings hope and joy to the downcast and broken hearted. That's cool. So, uh, so I went up there and I, I saw on Facebook after the fires, I started seeing my friends show on Facebook what was left of their homes. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends, Shane and Jennifer Edwards, all they had left was a chimney. Mm. And when I saw that chimney on Facebook, I knew I had to paint it uh, right away. And I have so many backstories. So is that the image that I have of that chimney? Is that the one that I have? Yes, that's Alpha the very Alpha. first thing. Alpha, tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so I, I went up, it only took me about three hours. I, I used all spray paint and I wanted to, I wanted to paint this image of this woman's this beautiful, a lot of people tell me my work is hauntingly beautiful. And I love creating artwork that uh, captures people emotionally in a deep way. Yes. And uh, so I painted this uh, painting and Amazing. it went, yeah, thank you. Um, it went viral uh, and the, yes. the community yeah. labeled it beauty among the ashes. That's and cool. People would pull over and, and, and get out of their car and just weep um, because they lost their whole community. People didn't just lose their home, but they lost yeah. where they worked, uh, their yeah. family members. And then overnight, the community dispersed all over the United States because people had to go somewhere to stay wow. um, when they evacuated. I, and I then, from the Midwest, I don't think about that because mm -hmm. we don't get fires like that. Like it never even dawned on me that people would have to disperse. And like, like you said, it was more than a home. It's, it's who they are, it's where they work, it's their neighbor, it's the mailman. It like, that doesn't even like, I never, that never even crossed my mind. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah and, and because of uh, the, the popularity, or I hate using that word, but because the mural impacted a lot of people in the community so deeply and yeah. quickly, um, that and I painted that on uh, January first, two thousand nineteen. Okay. The fire happened in November two thousand eighteen, yeah. and uh, so throughout two thousand nineteen, I took multiple trips from LA to Paradise, okay. and I painted about twenty two murals. I did some art installations. Uh, we did art exhibition one night, raised sixty thousand dollars. We gave money to the Paradise Art Center. I painted vans, uh, burnt down all, you know, cars, uh, auto yeah. garage. I paint Jesus, painted Jesus on a baptismal on a church that was completely destroyed. And, and there's so I, many stories. Do I have that image? I, I, I believe he emailed that to you. I'll look for it. I'll look for it. And if I get it, I'll, I'll put it up. But keep going, man. And just, wow. So I, I tell people now, uh, at Paradise, the Paradise Project basically ruined me because <laughs> now I have to continue to, to find projects where I feel like I'm creating artwork that's bringing hope to people that are devastated. I get it. I get and, it. And so I got bombarded by media. I was on the cover of LA Times. I was on New York Times, Washington Post, uh, Weather Channel. Uh, National Geographic, uh, Associated Press it was in their top 2019 photos for the year. Um, cool. I mean, there's a photo of AOC, a bombing in a, in a country, and then there's my chimney mural. Yeah. And I'm just like, my gosh, Lord, Wait, what are you doing? You did AOC, bro? No, 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 no. I'm just saying in the top 2019 photos of the year, okay. There's okay. AOC, you know, there's a bombing with people dead, then there's my chimney. You know, it's, uh, it was pretty intense how God, I, I could just keep going about all that. Uh, I mean, I, I was so hit with media that I just got sick for three days and I had to go to sleep and wow, uh, 
people seeing me messages asking me to paint their dog and mm -hmm. their cat or their loved one uh it, it got really overwhelming for yeah. you know longer. so shane shane one of the things you said was that you went international in 2019 how many years well you already kind of told us that but how many years have you been in the industry to finally get that okay let's let's back up that's a big one let's take one yeah. step back. how many years before you even ended up at disney like because sometimes, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm assuming maybe it took some time, but I don't know. Was it, was, it, was it a while or were you really, you just had great connections out the gate and it helped propel you that much faster? No, I, I had, I had, a, I was on a different path for many years. Okay. So I, I uh, when I was 19, uh, in the early night, uh, I'd say uh, 2009 or um, was it 1990? Yeah, 90. So I started doing graffiti. I'm a Christian, so I was doing it legally, but I would just yeah. go to youth groups and do graffiti. So this is like me, completely raw, no business skills, no right. in life. Right. My parents were wonderful at you can do anything you set your mind to, yeah. um, and I'm not faulting them, but they there was not a lot of here's how you prepare, um, how do you plan. And, and to be honest, I probably wouldn't listen to him anyways. Totally. Uh, at that time. <laughs> so, look, there, there's like, I didn't get the core element, but wait a minute, I don't even know if I would have listened. I, I get that. I get, <laughs> I, I get it. My mother pushed some stuff on me, and to this day, I'm like, oh, so go ahead. Uh, yeah. So, you know, all those years, I thought that I was going to be, and I was involved with a lot of friends. I was in YWAM, Youth with a Mission. Most of my friends were pastors. I kind of thought I was going to go that direction yeah. uh, because God always used me with kids. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, uh, and then I moved to San Francisco uh, to, to work in YWAM. And I was working with, I lived on Sixth and Mission, uh, Tenderloin, uh, HP, which was the best battle in the world. But I, I started to grow in my exposure with large scale street art and graffiti okay and, but at the same time i had the, like the project you were talking about was 20 foot sculpture of this steel man that i did I remember that a youth convention. yeah it was for a youth convention wow that's cool yeah yeah that was in the assembly of god because i grew up in the and that's where we met somewhere around there through roosevelt that's that's when i saw the statue and that that was just like wait what yeah. he this you dude made that like it was well because in my <laughs> mind not being an artist i mean an artist had to create it but in my mind that not being an artist in that capacity it never even registered and i was just i was so blown away it was yeah. like it's hard to describe you, you have to be there to capture it yeah yeah and and so i had this kind of world i was playing with feet um, but then um, I started learning how to do props and large scale sculptures for sets and, and conventions and things like that. And yeah. that actually, that 20 foot sculpture I did in California got me out to the FNI, Cries for the Nations. And that's, that's where that's I huge. Roosevelt and you. Yes. Uh, and so I was kind of like this rogue artist running around doing different projects. And then I'm living in a Center after school youth program in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and backing up, uh, when I was bombarded about paradise, most of, most of the media would say, why do you go paint on down uh, buildings and like that? And uh, I said, well, in a way, I've kind of been doing this my whole life because I've always had a heart towards mission and always yeah. my upbringing. Right. You know, my, my first mural was in an orphanage. So, um, what was your first and, mural and again? Say that again. It was in a finish in Chico. An event in Tacoma. Okay, got it. Wait, yeah. Tacoma, Washington? No, no. Um, oh, you broke up. Oh. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it just kind of goes in and out, but we're, we're it's working overall, so I'm good with it. We're going to keep pushing. Okay. So, yeah, my first mural was in an orphanage in Mexico, right out of Ensenada. Now I got it. Wow. How did that make you feel? Like, 
that in your first your it took to 2019 for you to go international, but your first mural was international. He was actually, I never thought about it that way. That's that's cool. That's <laughs> super cool, man. <laughs> that is super so, cool. So over the years, you know, I, I went to on a missions trip to Peru. I did a church that was out in the cuts, you know, no one would ever see it. Uh, and then Brazil, I did a mission trip to Brazil and, and I painted in a school that was there in a couple different places. Yeah. Um, inner city, I painted in projects. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, in 2010, I went to Cambodia to, uh, to paint murals in a building that was going to be a brothel for girls underage. Really? And uh, yeah. Okay, so you were a Christian artist. And like, how, did you know in advance, how'd you reconcile, what'd you do? Your screen went black, but I know you're coming back and I hope I can still hear you and you can hear me. And if not, we'll figure I can it out. hear you. Okay, you can hear me, all right, cool. So yeah. how did that go, bro? Oh, Cambodia, oh gosh. Yeah. So um, I, in my church, had a missionary that uh, was, uh, he actually went to Cambodia, I think he was for six years, okay. working with an organization, a faith-based organization, Agape yeah. International Missions, uh, or AIM. Okay. And he, he reached out to me, he said, well, he's like, bro, would you be willing to come out to Swipe Clock and, and paint years mm -hmm. with girls that have been rescued? And I was like, dude, you know, so when he would come to our church, he would always have a message during the day, Sunday morning, but he would have a message at night, Sunday night, was called the Rage. And that's where he's like- you gotta say that again. What was the Sunday night one called? Rated R message. One more again. At Sunday night, he was rated R. Rated R? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's where he would, you know, talk about, you know, girls with sword on their, you know, mouth. And, uh, I mean, you know, strip clubs and wow. karaoke bars and, I mean, stuff that I'm not even going to talk yeah. about. I mean, virgin rooms, you know, where people pay more money for a young virgin um people that would buy girls and just keep them as sex slaves so yeah broke my heart and then yeah i, I just devastated how did that and, impact you like i mean what did that do like yeah how did that impact you like what 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 transpired for you afterwards or birthed from you in that moment or or you tell us i mean i have no idea but i would imagine it definitely had an impact yeah there there's many impacts you know one thing that especially in the christian community you know people would come up to me and go um you know i can't believe you went out there or mm -hmm. didn't you just want to kill you know those people but it's wow. it's kind of a messed up gig and mm -hmm. what i mean is whole communities mixed up in the trafficking i mean an aunt will sell a dot uh, a, 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 a you know niece a, a mom will sell a daughter a dad will sell a son or whatever so or it's the community who has this brothel and yeah, and just to make it it's just what it is yeah um and then you know, what scares me is is you know we always talk about the victims or the girls that were rescued or there's that, that this issue mm -hmm. but what about the demand side you know there wouldn't be all these underage prostitutes or trafficked sex slaves if there wasn't a demand right and right. uh you know so there's a lot of guys from america mm -hmm. europe Mm -hmm. upper class Asia that are going and they are mm -hmm. wanting to have sex with younger and younger girls. Wow. So that that means that there's something wrong with our culture. There's some major Agreed. issues. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. So you know, all those oceans are going on me why I'm there. But what what I tell you just keeps me focused is I'm there to bring 
paint a beautiful painting or two uh, it will stay with the community and hopefully my my heart is that it's encouraging these girls that they it's also going to hopefully bring hope sometimes we just take and they still hit the far, you know, and then that's when you got to let the Holy Spirit do what he do. That's cool. Yeah, now, God, yeah. you were breaking up a little bit, but one of the phrases you began with that I really want to make sure I hear the end of is about hope. There was, there was an aspect of hope you were just talking about about 20 seconds ago. Do you remember what that was? Well, hope is a big theme of work. Uh, okay. So I can easily talk about hope. hope. Hope is everything. Uh, we know we live in a world right now. You, you showed the uh, great tub that I did. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I painted that in Oak Park, Sacramento. Oak Park is the day I did that, four guys were shot and killed about five blocks from me, you know, because it was a major game activity. Okay. But that in a period, because I wanted to revive the truth. Harriet Tubman. Uh, that's a quote from her. Every great dream begins with Kramer. And to me, this image is bringing hope. I mean, it made violence. And there, there's traffic and there's prostitution. Yeah. Yeah. And she's the woman who freed herself from slavery. Yeah. Then she chose to risk her life, not caring yeah. about her own life, and yeah. went back many times to save other slaves. Yeah. And she helped the army and yeah. saved tons of people. And she ended up dying in poverty. Wow. You know, it's, it, but uh, to me, she is a major, you know, uh, she's a hope bringer. She yeah. brought hope to people who were going to stay in slavery and probably die in slavery. Yeah. And probably didn't have any other mindset. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Until this, till this lady and goes, hey, you can be free. <laughs> you, know yeah. you know, very powerful. One of the things that, you know, you, you didn't say, but I heard was your sense of purpose was not mitigated. You found ways that spoke to your heart to maximize that. And the reason I say that is, especially in times like, well, times as they've been all along, but times now that we live in, you weren't necessarily active as people consider active, but you were active by painting those murals to inspire hope, by you know going to that town to remind people of what's possible, but also the beauty and the ashes as it was titled. And I'm only bringing that out because for some people, they may not have the voice to say what they need to say, but they have an expression that is against that culture that doesn't work or that is towards or for humanity and towards love and what that looks like. And I just applaud you, bro, that you, you took pain, frustration, confusion, and you blessed the planet through, yeah. through your expression. And that speaks volumes is what I'm really trying to say. That speaks your work especially now that I have more context for your work. That's, a, that's, that's awesome, man. And to not neglect the opportunity to go to Cambodia, but see it as an opportunity to still minister, create, inspire, hope, deliver what you can in the midst of where there's ridiculous demand from first yeah. world countries. And, yeah. and, and for whatever the reasons are, even a willingness from the third world country to supply it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, most people yeah. run from that. Like, no, I can't, I won't. But you're like, hey, opportunity, deal. That's, that's impressive, bro. That's impressive and commendable. Well, yeah. You know, um, thank you. Um, but I, I feel like it's, uh, I, I'm a strange cat. Like, <laughs> You know, it's like, what what do I do when I have a couple of days off? I drive through in L.A. because I want to get personally. And I'm yeah. trying to figure out 
what I can do as an artist to do something. I, I, I was just driving through Compton, Crenshaw, uh, South Compton, or, you know, or not South Compton, kind of, because I've had this theme of doing uh, Martin Luther King. I've painted uh, four Martin Luther Kings, uh, and, and I just, I, I have a dream. Because I, I feel like with a lot of the unrest that's going on right now, yeah. um, I, I feel like a lot of the younger generation has forgotten who, or they don't know who Martin Luther King right. is or what he stood for. He, he stood for peace. He stood for equality. Right. Um, but he also, you know, um, he believed that uh, all people could go hand in hand. And, right. It, right. and it's not about, you know, what we, it, it's, it's not the color of our skin. It's, it's our character who, you know, yes. make us who we are. Yes. And so I've been doing that kind of on purpose to go again for the narratives that are out there right now. And it's yeah. just my, my way of, of doing that. But I've painted Martin Luther in um, Sacramento. I do. Oak Park. This is on Paso Boulevard. And then I painted on uh, in Santa Monica. Uh, and uh, this is what you're going to see me eventually, brother. That's what I'm coming to. I love dude, that. That beach is awesome. You're gonna I love it. I love Santa Monica. <laughs> Just my heart's like when I step in those in, in Santa Monica, I'm like, yeah, this is home. This is where I belong. That's literally how I feel. That's cool. That's so cool. I'll look for it when I'm there next time, which hopefully will hopefully I'll, uh, with everything going on, hopefully within the next six months. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, I feel like I've just been kind of uh. There's so much going on in the world right now. I mean, it's just like, and I have to kind of pray and go, okay, where are you leading me? You know, where do you want me to go? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I love, yeah. And, and I, I love doing stuff that, uh, like when Kobe Bryant passed, he died. Did you I did do a Kobe big Project? mural. Yeah, I did a 20 foot mural of Kobe, oh, West man. Hollywood. So I might have seen it on the news, but I don't have that one. I gotta. I'm a huge Kobe fan, so I gotta find that one. Yeah, that's what's so, up. Yeah, and and I love that because uh, you know I love basketball, and I, I just that's right. And I you used to play. Yeah, I used forgot to. about that. <laughs> I totally forgot you could hoop, bro. Yeah, man, that was back. I loved playing ball. That was back then. Oh, man. That's when I could still get up. <laughs> I don't even own a pair of hoop shoes. I don't even. What? Why? <laughs> uh, it's man, all I, story now. I was, I was getting in shape. I don't remember. Probably a, a couple years ago, trying to get my hips loosened up again so I could start running yeah. again. And, bro, I grabbed the ball. And I just wanted to do slide, defensive slides around the court, you know, left and right. <laughs> yeah. and after the third step, I couldn't, the ball was every, I couldn't even hold, it, I couldn't keep a dribble. It was hilarious. <laughs> so anyway, I remember I used to be able to put it up and ram it in, but that, that used to is, that use, that word is, uh, the, 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 uh, that's the difference maker. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, and, and then when I try to play, I go bang down low and I can shoot. But yeah. I'm guarding guys that are like 25 years younger than me now. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Just all you have to do, bro, is just run around. And I'm going to like fall over. So. <laughs> uh. Run around and play D. That's about it. And, and, and hope <laughs> and hope I don't slide on the floor like some of these guys in the league. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the pieces, because I want to, I'd like to move more toward where you are and where you want to go and what your focus is and, and, and how people can follow you and trail you. But one of the pieces that you, I'm assuming you did this year of Chadwick, um, maybe you can tell us about that and uh, inspiration around it, if there were any. Um, again, I know hope is your primary source or focus when you're creating a piece, but this one I thought, simply because of the timing, right? Uh, I, would, I would wanna talk about it, but you shared it with me and I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, I, I literally get tagged on Instagram like 10 to 12 times a day because of this mural. Wow. And I, I love doing stuff. I mean, Black Panther, the movie is awesome. I love the Marvel movies. 
he was great. He was so, and I loved him in 42, Chadwick. Yeah, uh, yeah yes, that was good. Power movie and history. And, and uh, so when he passed, um, it, it, it really frustrated me. And, and it was yeah. just like, man, are you kidding me? And he didn't say anything, so he's private. Yeah. Clowning him, lying when he was super skinny. He was must be doing, yeah, going emo. Yeah, wow. And I didn't hear that to afterwards, man. I can't believe that. That's just how we operate. I mean, as an actor, yeah. to me, as an actor, I, I certainly saw it, particularly in the five in the five uh, bloods. What? And I just thought maybe he's getting ready for another film because you know, some particularly character actors, they do do that. They'll gain, they'll lose, and they'll adjust. It wasn't until after that I had heard that he was trolled. And I, I just, it's so, um, you know, Stephen Covey wrote a book several years ago, How to Win Friends, Influence People, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he tells this story. He tells this story about a man in Florida. It's super freaking hot, humid, Florida humid, which I hate. And he yeah. has three kids. They get on this bus, city bus, and the kids are like walking around, bothering people. And, you know, just being kids, man. So finally, one man gets the courage and says, hey, mister or sir, or whatever he said, why don't you tell your kids to sit down? And the man's response was, I would, but I don't know how to tell them their mother just died. Oh, like geez. we go through life with all these things in our head about what we think is right. And yeah. those judgments on people without even attempting to be empathetic or ask questions. And when you talk about Chadwick, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think uh, for me, you know, as a Christian, yeah, um, I've been a part of many and I'm not I'm not I'm really trying to be sensitive here and not judge. But there's been a lot of churches, especially when I worked in the inner city, I worked in the hood. So I lived in the hood for about three, four years. Yeah. But I mean, people would come in, you know, barbecue burgers, hot dogs go into a community, do a day of clean, and then they would get a bunch of people saved. Yeah. And, and I, I get their hearts, but for me, I'm like, okay, God has given me a gift. Yeah. Why don't I just gift a community? To work? You know, that's my way of saying Jesus loves you. Yeah. And, but, but by the time I'm done with that, I'm shaking hands people. And Wait. You're breaking up, and I'm not. We are not gonna miss this because this is too good. So we'll give the internet a second to catch up. But you were yeah. saying by the time you were done with your work, you, you started to describe something to us. Could you repeat yeah. that? Yeah. So I, well, you know, if I'm working here all day, three days, people from the community are coming up to me. I'm shaking right. hands. Yeah. You know, they're taking pictures. Yeah. Sometimes people bring their kids. And can we meet you, you know? And so for me, Chadwick was, uh, I knew he was a hero to black me. Yeah. Um, the movie was, cause it was celebrating uh, African-American culture and characters, actors, actresses. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and for me, like, I believe that, I believe the Bible that we all are created in God's image. Yeah, got it. Period. It's simple. So I know I'm a white dude, but you I don't care. I'm going to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. I know you man. personally, so, but yeah. So it's my way with all the still on rest and everything that's going on right now. I think the best thing I could do is be a hero to the black community and give them something that they can. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm like, I'm telling you, I get hit up all day long from all races yeah. that man I'm so you know so it's my way of just kind of gifting a community i hope that's that's my goal you're doing it bro you're doing it and i yeah for it. One, as a matter of fact uh one of the things i've had in some conversations uh recently is like your work with harriet tubman so yeah. harriet tubman was certainly a hero and she didn't do it alone she had many allies that were non-black and a lot of them white that helped make that happen. It was a collaborative effort of people yes. who cared about humans and love and life and God collectively. 
So I appreciate the work that you do. It's tremendous. And it can never be done by one. It's about us realizing we really are all created in one image and living from that place as compared to the image we think we see and live or judge by or et cetera, et cetera, that has been pushed towards us that we've eventually accepted, of course. And so yeah. keep it up, man. And yeah. So what, what now? Like what now? What do, you, what's, what do you feel like is God's putting your heart, your focus for the next, I don't know, 30 days, three years? Is there something big coming up that you are anticipating or maybe not? Or <laughs> what, what, what's it looking like? Are you ready? <laughs> ready. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm just going to fire off a shotgun right now okay. and then we can, you can go back on whatever you want. Okay. Um, I've been talking to a winer in, uh, uh, um, in Beirut, uh, where the explosion happened. Yeah. And then I, I might have a paid gig in Portland for another Martin Luther King. I had a dream. That's, uh, in, in Portland. Yeah. That's cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. I, I, uh, I have a, a police officer that was shot and killed. Okay. Um, so that's, that's on the back burner. We're trying to figure out how to do that. Okay. Um, that's, that's gotta be an interesting strategy conversation for sure. She's a minority and she's, um, and the other thing that kind of frustrates me is I would love to do a mural of, Officer David Dorn. Okay. But with a lot of the politics going on right now, I'm I don't even think I could find a mural or a space in LA that would allow me to do that. Mm, because it. it's, it's a lot. and that's for frustrating, you know, because yeah. he's a yeah. retired police chief, he's African American, and yeah. he was murdered. So yeah. uh that's a whole nother video. But um yeah, so working on that and then um do it bro uh, and then california's got fires like crazy i've been invited or asked to come to another community so that's in a process mm -hmm. uh, i'll go fund me that that type of project because uh you know because i'm like i'm out there i'm combat boots on and yeah sleeping in my truck eating burritos okay so hold on <laughs> is it your yeah. GoFundMe or the project's go fund me to help you or what what is what well, a lot of times, like when I did Paradise, um, I'll do a GoFundMe. So if the if it costs three thousand dollars, pay five murals. Yeah, and that's, that's not that's covering all the costs, materials, travel, all that type of stuff. I'll do a GoFundMe. Okay, got it. Because so, I've got a good community on social media. Well, be sure to give me that link so I can put it at the end of this particular broadcast so that people have the opportunity to contribute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's a must do. And, and what, that, first of all, your list is incredible. Is there more? Yeah, um, I'm designing a possible mural uh, in Hollywood that okay. is a tribute to Chadwick and Kobe. That's cool. Huge, huge mural. <laughs> in Hollywood. So do me a favor. Do you have a timeline for that? Well, we are... So there's a producer, a group that's their producers. They kind of, they go to the clients. They deal with all the negotiating. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm going to do this mural for free, but we're, we're trying to get the, the owners to pay for the prep and all the materials. And then we'll get other materials, spray paint and all that sponsored. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, cause it's prime location. Yeah. And, uh, and then, so the timeline uh, it could happen quick. It depends on if, if they see value in it. Understood. So do me a favor. Yeah. If you remember, let me know your dates. My brother lives in West Hollywood, in, in, in uh, Koreatown. I'll yeah. come out, hang out with him, and just connect on a set with you, man, and watch you do your deal. I, that's going to be historic. I'd love to just see it happen in action. All right. You got like, here, right? Scream, fist bump. Boom. Bam. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. That's and, cool, what else? Go yeah. Ahead. Continue. I want yeah. people to know because the work you're doing. So one of the things about Chicago that I have learned, I'm not from Chicago, but I've been here probably 17 years, is that art has paved the way for communities to transform and brought the healing that you describe. So that we still have lots of murals in several communities. And it's, it's some of the artists that I know, they're amazing. Like they're, they're just yeah. amazing. And so uh, 
I appreciate that you're doing that kind of work. So anything that we can do as an audience, as a supporter of what artists do that actually help us see truth, that inspire us to move, that give us hope, that take us to the next phase, that cause us to reflect and cause us to think or cause us to remember and sometimes cry, we want to support that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm uh, behind the scenes. I'm always, um, I'm, I'm usually designing. So if I've got a paid gig that takes, cause this is what I do full time. Right. Um, if, Which is a whole other got conversation. A, I want to know about that too. Yeah. So I'm always hustling. I'm always working very hard. So if I got a paid gig, say I just made 10 grand on a mural yeah. and I come home and I've got two weeks downtime before another gig is lined up. Yeah. I'm designing. I'm designing or I'm networking or I'm, you know, or and Chadwick that passes away. And then right away, I'm going, I'm going to go, I've got time. I've got, I'm going to go do it. And then I find my location and make it happen. So yeah. a couple things, Chadwick, I try to line myself up with issues that um, relate to my heart or, you know, what I love. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also with the times, what's going on. Chadwick passing, that, that's brainer i've got to go paint the next day i mean that's absolutely he's a hero in so many ways yeah. so but but it's also a brand and yes. what what i've been doing without knowing it is i've been branding myself as this guy that uh is doing things that are more portraits are and and so people are starting to me about Hey, can you do a memorial for a fallen police officer? Got it. Well, that that lines up with my passion. Yep. Are you kidding? I care about our law. Absolutely. I want to be able to call nine one one if somebody's trying to break in my house. You know, it's yep. like yep. You know, so uh, and I've been trying. I've been reaching out to people and, and police officers that I know. I'm like, hey, if there's a way that I can bless your organization yeah uh, with a mural you know yeah. i'm letting you know I'm, and i'm doing that i'm gonna reach out yeah but somebody reached out to me mm -hmm. that was super cool somebody reaching out in a town that has been completely fire saying that followed me all my work there. um can you do that to are you kidding yes you know I, I can't wait to i'm ready i can already visualize it yeah yeah i got my my steel toe boots on, I'm walking in ashes, no one's with me, and then I'm painting this beautiful edge that's gonna create hope to people in that area. Um, so yeah. all these things are, you know, are coming in line. And then when I have more downtime, I'm always finding something that I feel like is pushing my style or yeah so how do you do that? Like, give me an example of how you how you push yourself right like because it sounds like you're, you're still in the growth mindset which i think is amazing but i just take for granted you just do what you do but you just describe no man i'm pushing myself what's what are some of the things that you do to do that well my my hardest thing uh in life is downtime okay. i don't like downtime understood all by myself nothing lined up Okay, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I want to rock and roll. I want to know there's three projects lined up. Um, you know, I got money. Yeah. Uh oh, you're frozen. You look contemplative in your picture, but you're frozen. Can you hear me? Almost like you're moving. Say that again. You yeah, still, still moving, can't. But I lost you for about thirty seconds. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? It goes in and out. We can keep trying, though. We're doing good. Okay. Um, so I, I like I, I like being busy. So saying that to say, if I have downtime, I'm immediately on the computer and I'm designing. I, it, daily, I'm following other artists that inspire me, <clears throat> seeing what they're doing. With creating and that keeps that fire under me yeah you know to keep to keep pushing forward yeah that's good man that's and, good 
and it feeds my family. So that's number one. Number one, it takes care of my family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's, that keeps me pushing hard because I, I can make a ton of money in like a month or two months, but I know darn well, you got to sit on it. You just got to yeah. act like it's not there. Because yeah. you might not have anything for a month. Right. Um, so I've got a really open-ended schedule, but then when I'm busy, it's usually three projects at a time or boom, 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 right after each other. And then I'm traveling different states, possibly different countries. And that's yeah. the ultimate goal yeah. is that's why my wife homeschools. One of the reasons is, is because I want to take my daughters with more that's and more. That's cool. You know, so I'm bringing them up. They're learning how to work. Mm -hmm. They're spending quality time with me and we're, you know, we're doing it together. You're a proud papa, man. I like that. I like hearing that for as busy as yeah. you are and the demand on your life, your focus really includes how you're going to raise your girls and how you and your wife have come together and made it work. Like, I think that's, that's admirable, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I have one, not final question, but we are wrapping up here shortly. And, I, and, and so the final really is going to come from you in terms of what we end with. But one of the questions I have is how have you, cause I'm an actor, I'm an artist of a different kind. I'm an actor and I'm a speaker. So those are how I earn my bread and butter. So whether that's wellness or whether that's commercials, you know, that's how I earn my bread and butter. How do you, now you're 47, how, how did you learn to trust the process and not walk away during lean times? Well, you're an actor. So people might see you on a commercial. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's Mark Eves. Yeah. But you probably stood around for four to eight hours. Oh yeah. You're, you know, you got lighting, you got makeup, there's other people, yeah. uh, there's all the negotiations. If you have an agent, yeah. if you're your own agent. Mm -hmm. So there's all this, there's contracts up to that. There's phone calls, Zoom calls, meetings. Yeah. So it's like 5% politicking and <laughs> then 25% of it is actually, okay, now you're going to shine. You're going to go do what you want to do. Right. And uh, that's important for people to know. And you got to, you, you have to perfect that. And that just takes time. Yeah. You know, it takes time. And then when we're in the game, like we're, uh, you enjoy the four hours because you know why? Because you're over there, you're, you're getting a couple other actors names in your phone. You're getting That's to know them every time it, because that actor might be your next gig. That's correct. Oh, oh I this cat on this uh, shoot for a commercial. He would be perfect film. Yeah. And then you get a phone call. And so, you, you know, you, it just all starts becoming, it's all part of the process. Mm -hmm. When you do that artwork um, at when I'm doing that artwork now, now I've got a, a guy coming flying a drone, got a photographer, and video um, and then I have to do a social media post once or twice a day yeah uh, and then it all becomes part of the process got it good and you have to embrace that or you're not going to grow that's right you also said earlier that you 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 spend time following other artists and drawing and garnering inspiration from them and you find time to work and so I, when I'm working with people and they talk about what they can't do or, or whatever it looks like, I'm often trying to help them look at life the way you do. Like, oh, okay, so I can't do my main thing, but there's an aspect associated with my main thing that I've got to be on top of. You know, like in my world, that's like, okay, I need to spend more time just learning lines. And sometimes, which was the weirdest thing for me to adjust to, is I need to watch more films. That's yeah. part of my work. It's not lazy, lazy. It's I need to study, understand, and, and that, but all of those things coming together. Cause you know, you hear the term starving artists a lot. And I just, I just don't believe that that's the way it has to be. But sometimes I think it exists because people don't know how to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, <laughs> I, I talk to young people all the time about this and 
and I and I started to learn this later on in life, but the power of network. And you're 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 constantly networking. And a lot of artists are starving because they're not outgoing, they're not mm. charismatic, you know, or so they're what happens is and some artists have gotten offended when I said this, but they work on this piece of art in their studio and they pour their soul into it, their heart. Yeah. The universe is coming into this painting right now. Yeah. Okay, great. But if no one ever sees that painting, that's right. It's never going to get sold. That's right. Nothing. That's so, right. you know, I love creating artwork, I love the design side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love it when it comes together at the end, but I love getting my check and saying right. thank you. And then I'm peace got my photos. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Better than that one. Let's rock ball. So I'm trying to not get so emotionally attacked my work mm -hmm. and providing really helps that keep it perspective. So, yeah. You said you said providing something, and that one word didn't come through. Oh, providing, providing for, for your my family. family. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's everything, man. That's everything. Because that you know you can when your foundation is is not the way you'd like for it to be. It, it makes it hard to even create. So I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. I've had many days. I'm like, okay, I got to figure out how to bring all this together if I still want to do it my way, and not surrender. And uh, I've been learning to do that. And some opportunities have come up that have been really great to allow a level of foundation to exist while I'm still building other things. So yeah, exactly. It, it takes being aware and, and connecting, like you said, networking it, to find opportunities yeah. that you existed. You didn't even know existed. Yeah. It's good. And constantly working on your craft, mm -hmm. uh, better at what you do. Yeah. It, it draws people in and people say, Oh, I want that. I want that for work or that that person and so that is very important uh, and i've grown a lot in the last year by studying other artists finding out their process and going wow i didn't know that and mm -hmm. i've learned a lot by studying other artists and then i've made that to my own work and it's made me that's really cool and that just never stops yeah because does. you know i'm sure i want street i, I want street so I, I want people to go, wow, this guy amazing, yeah. amazing work. Um, that's cool. But I also like have a check. <laughs> Amen, man. Amen. That's yeah. it. Unfortunately, that is the means of exchange we've all agreed upon. So we've got to find a way to convert it to that. Period. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, you know, so weird. And I'm, I'm going to go back to you and however you want to leave the people with your last thoughts, I'm going to take. But I, I know a guy right now and he may have connected with business partners but he does only long form art headshots of paint painted heads yeah. and they are stinking phenom like yeah so good 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 but he didn't have but he's let me say it this way because this is more accurate he's just pure artists not necessarily yeah. business side or any of those other things and so you know i remember when he and i were talking uh it was a very challenging window in his life financially, but it's only because he hadn't met the right people because his work is so incredible that the people he's painted would probably buy it from him. Like that's yeah. how good his work is. And so uh, I love that you shared that about the necessity to network and, and, and get the business side down and really learn about your craft and continue to build. And so, yeah, but enough of me. What, in, in terms of thriving in this life, you've given us tons of tips and tools. Is there anything you'd like to wrap up with that needs to be said? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if there's artists that are, you end up watching this video, um, I can't stress the, I can't stress enough the importance of networking mm -hmm. and working on your craft behind the scenes. Um, if you really want to be successful and pursue your passion, you have to have the fuel, you know, to keep that moving forward. And that is, uh, if you're if you're in a community, you know, join the chamber of commerce. Yeah. 
Just Good. go out there, force yourself to go shake hands at the, I mean, right now we're in COVID, but when they have networking and things like that, yeah. You know, yeah. force yourself to get out there. Yeah. Uh, find a cause that you care about. Uh, human trafficking, uh, social justice, uh, you know, breast cancer, anything. Yeah. And, and then go and start donating artwork or whatever your craft is to that, you know, because every year they have, uh, you know, black tie fundraisers, things right. like that. And get involved in your community that way because yeah. that forces you to get in front of people, give a card, yeah. give them your IG, Instagram, or just even communicate with people yeah. and let them see your art and what you're doing. Yeah. So that, that has to be uh, the rest of your life. It's a long-term goal. It's yeah. a long-term investment yes. that over time starts to work because then you're at a gig, uh, you're at a black tie event, fundraiser, yeah. Yeah. you're doing artwork, you're, you're donating your artwork. Somebody comes up to you and goes, I absolutely love your work. I want to hire you, commission you to do two paintings yeah. or a mural or whatever. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Uh, if you want to see it and grow. And uh, the artwork part, that's always going to happen as an artist. You're always going to develop as an actor. You're going to const you're gonna work with somebody else and you're going to pick something up from them and then add it to your, your tool chest. And that's just part of, that's part of it. But you have to decide this is where I'm going and then set a plan to make that happen successfully. Yeah. And then be in it for the long, long haul bad money times, That's right. uh, crises, yep. you know, whatever it is, you, you, you have to stay focused and pursue yeah. the passion that God put in your heart. It's really cool, man. It's really cool. Thank you, man. It's what, yeah. What has led me to where I am. I, I am just relentless about what I'm supposed to do and I don't have doubts. So come hell or high water, I just got to keep doing it. And so yeah, I, I, appreciate, do. I appreciate that. Listen, man, yeah. I am so yeah. happy we got to connect. And I'm even happier that uh, you were able to contribute to a world in which I'm just trying to add value to people. And it happens to a completely align with what you're doing. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for what you're doing to, you know, provide a platform for people to share and, and uh, you know, bring hope all around. I will, man. Hold on one second in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to people and then we'll jump on the phone. Okay. In a second. All right. Hold on. So you have heard it today on Thriving Thursdays. My friend Shane Grammer shared tons of inspiration, tons of hope, tons of insight. And so I have an ask of you today. He's not a starving artist, thankfully but he does need support to do the work that he does to bless the communities that have lost. So there's gonna be a GoFundMe link built into the, uh, on the page. Click it, contribute, go buy some of his art even, support what he's up to as he continues to support communities through the gifts that he has. I appreciate you. This is Marquise Martin Hayes. This has been Thriving Thursdays and it is my desire and passion that more than anything, you thrive. Peace.